One of the new features of the robotic camera that's also in the all-around professional is to check a part for free gripping space. Before a robot grips a part, uh, you want to be able to check that there's enough space for the gripper on either side. And also, like in this case, if we want to pick up some of these blocks off a conveyor, uh, there's four candidates. And if we're picking it up by the long edge, there's uh, two different good candidates. And you may want to prioritize the one nearest uh, the fixed stop, or you may want to prioritize the one in free space. And you can do that, and we'll show you how. So under the alignment, we have normal parameter. We've chose contour here, and we've taught. You can see one of these objects, and we've shaded it. And this is the new feature, the gripping space tab. The number of candidates is set to four. You can see up here we found three potential candidates and chose this fourth one. And if I go three, we've lost one. Two, we've lost one. One candidate. We set the number of candidates to the sum number greater than one. Here it shows you the gripping space is clear. And we're sorting based on X position. So up here in the origin is 0, 0. And I'm going to the right is plus X and going down is plus y. So I've chosen this one, but instead if I wanted one that was against the rail for some reason, I could um, come down here in the sorting order, it's descending, I could change it to ascending. And now you see it chose this one. Let me go back, it's on the top right, we're descending, I change it to ascending and it goes and it chooses this upper left one. Okay, to show the gripping space, I'm going to go View Overlay Settings and turn off my alignment and turn on my two gripping detectors, Gripper 1 North, Gripper 1 South. And there they are. If I zoom in, and as I go through these, as they get closer, we still have free space, still have free space, still have free space, still, still. Oh, okay. Now we no longer have free space, and you can see, if I zoom in, that the red is infringing upon the other part, so the gripper space is not free. And if I go back one image, you'll see this red circle will go green, back, and there we go. And you can see we're now clear, which leads us to the next point. Suppose we had a um, one of those grippers that had a bar uh, on one side and a pin on the other, such that the pin was much longer because it had an air cylinder you had to get in the gripping space as well. Okay, let's go back to our first image and I'll make the gripping space a little bit bigger and we'll try it again. Let me go to my alignment so we can see our gripper space here. I'm on image three and four and you know now we've infringed on the other part early. So similarly we could have uh, moved the gripper space detectors to the right and left if we want to check and grip the part from the short side. Okay, let's create a new job and show you how this is done. Delete all and load images and we'll go to the alignment and down here you can't see it but I'm going to check contour. Okay, and we're going to choose the block and I'll expand the search area and I'll edit this contour. All I really want are these outside edges, and then I'll click Invert All, and we're only looking at the outside edges. Now I'll lock it, and we've taught our detector. Now let's go to Gripping Space. We can see we're clear, but I'm only going to evaluate one candidate, and I want to evaluate four. Okay, now we need two detectors for Gripping Space. On one side, I'm going to use a gray dete level detector, and that's obviously white is 255. So I'm going to set this very high, and the threshold is quite low, and for this application I need to set this pretty high, because if I'm just infringed on the gray level tool, 10%, um, I'm still going to have a very high score. For the other gripper space, I'm going to use a caliper. I'm going to choose a single-ended caliper, and if I click the results button down here at the bottom, we can see uh, each individual search stripe. And one is in the middle, one is at the very top, one is at the very bottom. And the distance I'm measuring is 82.5 pixels. If I set this for 7 
78. Then from this left edge, because that's where my arrow is, I'm measuring the distance from this left edge to the part, um, and that distance has to be 78. So if I find anything in there, then um, this detector will fail. So really, I do need more search stripes so that I have I'm checking more line, more horizontal lines for any uh, debris or other parts in there. You can see when I click to the next image that because of our software alignment, the uh, caliper detector moves down and over when our part moves down and over. And looking at our alignment, you've got our gripping free space is clear. As soon as I infringe on the left, my gripping space is not clear. So if we zoom in, you can see right here, this is this is right on the edge of the next part, but our gripping space is still precisely clear. And then if, as soon as I infringe a little bit, um, I know precisely the distance and I fail the caliper and declare the gripping space bad. Suppose in this application I also wanted to verify the height of the block was correct. I could add a caliper detector for that. Okay, so again, we'll run through this gripper check with the next images and whoa, and we failed. So we're failing even though clearly our gripper space check is free. What's going on there? You go configure the gripper space under the output. And this overall job result, as I add detectors, the overall job result and this pin 12, the red blue wire, the A light on the back, by default gets created as all detectors passed. But we're using this overall job result to define our gripper check detectors. So let's look at our detectors here. And you can see the first two are actually gripper checks. Gripper checks are these two, only the first two. And the third one is this other caliper. And that caliper's failing, and that was what was giving us a false gripper check. Because, again, our grippers are still clear. We see on the right and the left, but this detector's failed. So what we need to make sure we do as a second step I never told you about, after we configure our two gripper check detectors, we need to come here and set these to off, uh, such that you can see the logical expression is only is D1 and D2. By, by default, it's A for alignment, and D1, and D2, and D3. Also, you don't want to pick inverse because that just put in D1 and D2 and not D3. You probably can't see it, but there's an exclamation point uh, in front of the D3, and that in this syntax means not. So the ampersand here means and. Again, for gripper space and overall job result, we want D1 and D2. Turn D3 off, and there we have it. So now let's run through the gripper space check. And our detector failed, but our gripper space is still good. Our gripper space is still good, still good. Okay, there it failed. It failed, and if I go back one image, boom, it passed. So the next thing we need to do that we need to care about, if we're using something like Ethernet IP or Profinet or Ethernet TCP IP, add a couple of rows here. I can pick my alignment detector, and I can put in the overall result, and I can also put in gripping space. So these are both bits that will be one when the positive overall result passed, zero if it failed. Gripping space similarly will be on when the gripping space is clear and off when it's not. So you can send this to your PLC or robot as an extra check along with your X, Y, and angle, you could add gripping space to make sure you it knows that the part is clear for gripping. And if not, you can index the conveyor or turn on the vibratory feeder or alert the operator. Here is a real world example. If we go click on alignment. You probably come up by default here on the help tab. We're going to click here on the right on this result tab that shows us our score and our gripping space for the alignment. So this one's already been configured and we're just going to go through these four images. You can see here that this was the alignment image we taught. You can further see we found this one candidate here because the line is thick with closely spaced dashes. And here we found two other candidates because the line is thin and the, the dashes are further spaced. So these were three were all of our candidates and this was the chosen candidate. So let's look at our gripping space configuration down here on the bottom. Again, we're on alignment and we'll click on gripping space. We can see we're looking at up to 10 candidates. We're sorting on position Y. Let's go through these. We're passed on the first image. The second image, we found this one. We're sorting in the Y with zero being up here and getting higher as we go down. And we found this image or we found this 
this bolt. And if we wanted another one, we could change the sorting criteria from ascending to descending. You can see how it moved. So if you watch the screen up here, where a sort order is descending, I'll make it ascending. Again, ascending, descending. Back to ascending. Now let's check the next image. So uh, our gripper space is still passing on image two. On image three, it fails because there's no free space around any of these parts as we defined it. So let's look at image four. Image four again, free space, we passed that one in the lower right. And if you wanted others, you can't see it, but I'm going to go down here and choose. We, we're on position Y for our sort criteria. I'm going to go to X and you can see it changed. And we're still in ascending order. I'm going to click descending order and you can see how it moved to that. All right, let's check out these other detectors. Uh, here we have our two gripper checks. Our thresholds are set to 95 and you can see we're looking on either side of the threads. And let's look at our output. Our overall job result is just D1 and D2 while we don't happen to have any additional detectors added. If we did add some more detectors like a caliper for distance, we come here to output. We want to make sure we turn these off three and four because again the overall job result is our chooses which detectors we're going to use for our gripping space